Hyundai channel, welcome to our live video series. This one, we are gonna take a look at the top of the line 2022 Kia Sorento SX. Now in the States, it's like an SX Prestige or something like that. The idea is this is the very top of the line. We happen to film in Canada, but most of that won't matter uh, depending on, that shouldn't matter where you're from. Most of this should be the same stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in depth with this vehicle and we're gonna do a tech review, but not a tech review for techie people. Just sort of something that makes the car make sense to regular people. And I hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, this one also happens to have a burgundy interior. So we're gonna use that vehicle to show you the burgundy interior. And then we can compare and contrast with one that happens to have a black interior. These are identical cars, other than obviously the color on the inside and on the outside. So if you're joining us for the very first time and you just wanna to get to the meat of this uh, review and you're not live with us, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark, which is where we'll get going with the content. If you wanna know how to join us, you can stay with me for a second. I'll show you how to do that. And uh, we'll also talk about some news and some notes with our live audience. All right, let me go back to where I need to be. There we go. So if you wanna join us live, you're gonna to go to our YouTube page. You can see it right there. You're gonna refresh the page at exactly two o'clock Eastern time, which is what we're doing right now. And that main video that's uh, down on the bottom there, it's gonna be replaced by our live video. We're gonna click into that. As you click into that, you're gonna watch an ad. And I have no idea what this ad is for. All right, I'm gonna skip that ad, but I'm gonna run a quick ad for our team here at Brantford Kia, Brantford Hyundai, and Owen Sound Hyundai. If you are in Ontario and you wanna buy a car, reach out to me. As soon as this video is done, I'm gonna edit the description to have a link to reach out to me. If you reach out to me, I'm gonna work with a team of people that will take care of you. And really quickly, while we're talking news and notes, that's one of the things that's changing in 2022. We've had some conversations here. I'm gonna work closer with our sales team, both the Owen Sound sales team, the Brantford, sales, Brantford Hyundai sales team, and of course, I've always worked closely with the team where I film here in Brantford Kia. And uh, just to try to make sure that what you guys are asking me is being transferred to our sales team and that they make sure that they are sort of picking up where I leave off with these videos, just to make it more seamless for you. We just basically, I think there's ways we can improve on the way we serve customers and uh, that's part of what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna be working with even closer with our sales team. And that means that uh, it's just better for you when you buy from us. So um, that's one of the news things. 45 seconds to go before we hit our live video. If you're a regular with us, make sure you hit that like button right now. If you're not a regular with us, I'm gonna try to earn your like throughout this video. And uh, somebody's asked me, any chance of trading those tires for my 20 inches on the Santa Cruz? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, so somebody's from Winnipeg joined in for the first time. What else is going on in the news? We have like 20 cars in compound. So we're gonna start seeing a variety of cars coming in at the Kia dealer, Hyundai dealer, same sort of type thing. We're starting to see more cars come in. So um, we actually just had uh, someone come in and buy this car because it was sitting on our lot. So uh, people who are waiting for cars, uh, you can still occasionally now get lucky and buy a car sitting on our lot. All right, five seconds to go before that three minute mark. Let's jump in right now. All right. Those of you tuning in for the first time, welcome to our live video series. Okay, so here's how this is gonna go. We're gonna spend about 30 minutes going over these cars. That seems like a long time, so if it seems like a long time, grab a snack, grab a beverage, we'll go through it pretty quickly. We wanna show you the burgundy leather interior because that's what a lot of people wanna see. We'll start with that, and then we're gonna do a tech review for those that aren't used to sort of some of the tech. We'll try to make it make sense because uh, as one of our salespeople said, they're like, well, shouldn't their salespeople tell them this? Because I had some people call me and their salespeople didn't tell them this. So I'm gonna make sure that I tell you and uh, then if you work with us, it becomes easier. And if you work with someone else, well, you know, hopefully I'll do their job for them and someday they'll thank me. All right, here we go. First thing in tech, let's just look at the key. Let's flip it around here. This is our key for the car. Not a whole lot to show you. That is a power operated tailgate on the SX trim line. So you're getting a lot of features and options in this car. Um, you can pop the tailgate there and it is powered tailgate and it is a remote start on the key fob. Because it's a push uh, button start, I can keep this key in my pocket the entire time. I never have to touch it for any reason at all but I do have the option to use it if I want to. You do have the button on the door to unlock. One tap does one door, two taps do all the doors, or if you wanna set it up like I do my car, a single tap will unlock all the doors. So there is that. All right, when we talk about technology, uh, sometimes it's hard to point out still little things. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about a couple things that you can't see right now. First thing you can't see is we talked about the remote start on the key fob. There's also a cell phone app. This is me holding a cell phone. That's what my universal signal is. And the cell phone app does a lot of things with this car, more so than almost any other car we have. And I think more than any car we have. You can do all kinds of things like see how many kilometers left you have of fuel. That's one thing we don't really talk about a lot. You can see how many kilometers uh, or how much fuel is in the tank. You can see things like if there's a diagnostic issue, some, some of those minor diagnostic issues, it'll tell you what's going on. Uh, I think some of the cars will even tell you uh, if your washer fluid is low, if you have oil low or anything like that, an issue like that. 
But you can also remote start your car from your cell phone, which is what most people use that app for. There is a delay, it's not perfect, but you can do it from your cell phone, and that means you can be out of range. So you can be in the shopping mall, cars outside getting covered in snow, and uh, you can remote start that car from in the mall, even if your key fob itself is out of range. You can lock the car, unlock the car. There's a lot of things you can do, including turning on your heated seats, heated steering wheel, that kind of thing. So this car has all those functions. My favorite function with the cell phone app is on that cell phone app, you can use the 360 camera. So there's cameras, which we'll show you in a minute, to take pictures from all around you. So I've done a video on that, and I, it's something about uh, take pictures of your, uh, using your cell phone, or use your car's cameras to take pictures of your cell phone. If you just go into the search bar and go Kia Hyundai channel, uh, pictures, uh, 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 what is it, cell phone, something like that, it should come up and you'll find it there, no problem. Hey, look at that. We're Deeper and deeper. All right, so uh, that's one thing to do. I'll try to link that uh, in the future in the bottom there, but there's just some cool things you can do with that app, and it's pretty good. The, somebody said to me, why is the app rated low? The app is rated low on the App Store because there's, uh, it hasn't been perfect, the app, let's be honest, and sometimes there's, well, there is always a delay between the app and the vehicle. It can be frustrating to use that delay, but it works very well if you just accept that there is gonna be a little bit of a delay between when you hit the button, for instance, to start the car, and when the car actually starts. So something to just keep in mind, that's essentially why the app is rated low. All right, let's jump in here and start looking at the burgundy interior. Now, the very first thing I have to tell you is, I can already tell that the color that this is, the way I see it on my screen, is not the way I see it with my eyes. So it is a burgundy interior. It's not as orangey as it's appearing to me, but your screen, and my camera will each play into, and the LED lights that were under it, will each play into how this looks on camera. So the idea is if you like burgundy leather, this will show you where it is. The specific exact color, um, you're just gonna have to trust me that it is a nice burgundy color. And this to me on my screen today looks a little bit more orange than it does in person. So you've got a two-tone wheel. I've been told by my fashion people that this is still cool. Uh, I wasn't sure if everybody would like that because to me, that's the only thing that I'm not sure if everybody likes, but I've been told a lot of people who are fashion, much more fashion sensitive than I am, are telling me that this is cool. And overall, the seats I think are excellent. You've got this quilting pattern in here. And of course there are perforations as a detail in there. Those perforations are functional. They are ventilated seats. And I think it looks sharp and it's the right amount of burgundy without too much. Sometimes we go and do some plastic down here that's also the accent color. And I think this should be black like it is. And the nice thing is if we're talking about technology in this car, let's talk about the seats. The best seats we have in the business are right here. Um, not every car we have has four-way lumbar support. So you can put your lumbar in and out and you can move it up and down on your back, which I quite like. And you have this piece right here. If I touch this button here, it extends out. So whether you're short or tall, it doesn't look like it's coming out a lot, but it really extends the seat from the way it feels to give you a longer seat or a shorter seat. And that's quite nice. So if you look at the door panel here, not the cleanest, I do apologize. We have, haven't got this car through detail yet or details to another sold cars. So we've got some white grayish stitching here. That's the detail there. And then you have the burgundy, um, leather there with the burgundy stitching. And again, color is not represented perfectly here. It does not look as nice on the camera as it does in person. Rear seats, same idea. You've got black plastic backed seats, which is nice if you have kids or anything like that. This is wipes clean with a cloth, but you still have the burgundy there, burgundy in the doors there. These are captain's chairs, and I just think they look really good. The uh, netting down here is black, so that's what that is. It's a little pocket, like a cell phone pocket or something like that. And again, yesterday we looked at this, basically the exact same car, uh, but the lower trim level, and it had a bench seat. This has captain's chairs in the middle. They are heated while we're looking at that. They are heated down here. You can see two levels of seat heating, and that'll be the seat bottoms only. Car's not on, that's why it's not turning on right now. And you also have uh, little details, uh, like the little extra visors there. So burgundy, burgundy, burgundy. Uh, why don't we pull up one seat in the back just so you can see there as well. Oops, I'm still grabbing the wrong spot on the Sorento. Coming out here, tech review, these lights are LED. They were not LED on yesterday's car at the lower trim level. Again, this is just shipping plastic, so don't worry about that. That comes off and that's actually a nice looking chrome area. And you can see I did a lovely job of not peeling that well. All right, let's pull up one seat here. Pulling up the one seat here, same idea exactly. You can see it's a burgundy seat there. The back is still the black, which is what you want for your luggage. You don't want that burgundy color there. Uh, with your luggage, I don't think. So uh, perfectly nice there. And again, ignore the shipping plastic. So let's put that down. We've talked about a lot of the tech in here. We saw the tech 
yesterday, USB uh, port for every seat and then some. You could fold down the middle row seats by pressing those buttons. There's your air conditioning controls as well for the rear air conditioning. So lots and lots of stuff in this car. Those of you that wondered, in 2021, you could not get this with a spare tire standard. Now it has a spare tire and jack standard. It used to have an inflator kit. So that's an improvement for 2022. Here's one thing I really like, and people give me a hard time for it, so hear me out. This button here will shut the trunk. This button here will shut and lock the trunk. And every time I say, if you had it in the past where you had to hit this button, and then you'd have to walk around to the side door and hit that little black button on the handle to lock it, people are like, well, why don't you just pull the key fob out of your pocket? And I answer, my answer every time is, someone like my wife probably hasn't seen her key fob in about a year because she, keeps it in her purse. If I had hit that lock button instead, the trunk would have shut just like it does now, but the entire car would have locked. And I think that's just a better feature. It's a new uh, upgrade that we see on our, on these, and it's worth having. All right, let's jump in here and talk more about the technology of this car and try to make fairly complicated, but actually easy to use. All right, first thing we're gonna do is because I'm indoors, I'm not gonna fully start the car. That's gonna leave some warning lights on. And you've got some things that I really like in here. And let me just see if I can get the steering wheel at the height that I want it to. Uh, there we go, that'll work. All right, so in here, let's take the shipping mode off. Wow, we're really early on this car here. All right, ignoring that shipping mode, there we go. So in here you have your uh, gauge cluster. Now, a lot of cars, when you see them like this, this just came from the uh, factory. Uh, you see over here, let's take this shipping plastic off here and we can see it with less glare. A lot of cars have the 10 and a quarter inch screen here, but they don't have a bigger screen here. So this is a larger screen, it's similar because one is a little further away, but this is a very large, very clear 12.3 inch display screen. And there's a lot going on here. So if I was to quickly start the car right now and signal left, that becomes my blind spot, stream of my blind spot, left or right. So we'll turn the car off because we don't want to gas out those people in the offices behind me. So we'll turn it back to on cameras are enabled through a 360 camera system and the 360 camera system let me show it to you right here is right here so now i have a bird's eye view of my car which you can see right here i can zoom out i can zoom in and you have that so the way you get this bird's eye view is there are cameras in the mirrors that in this film area here they are looking straight down in another way i can have them look straight back See the camera's a little bit dirty. And uh, if I was to put it in drive, and now I'm looking out forward and I wanna go the same views, well now I'm looking at my front wheels. So they can be, the cameras can be through software, uh, sort of designed to look straight down, designed to look back at the wheels, designed to look straight back at the blind spot. And this overall camera system is very, very good. And when we use, when we, remember when I said you can take pictures of the car uh, using your cell phone app? It uses these same cameras here. And when you take the side cameras there, it takes a picture sort of of the car beside you. So it's again, repositioned, re, um, the software is re-enabled to take pictures out more to the side and out to the front and out to the back. When you turn the car here, if I turn the wheel, it's a little tough to do here. You you can see that when I'm in reverse, it shows me where the back of the car is going to go, but it also shows me where the front's going to swing, throw it into drive, and it does the exact same thing. It shows me where the front wheels are going to go and where the side is going to swing. So you don't hit that drive through, you know, curb or that drive through garbage can sitting there. So you can have those kind of centered out there as well. And the thing I like about the front camera is that could be a curb where I can't possibly see it from the driver's seat. And of course you can see it there. So because this screen is fairly large, you get a lot of benefit there. And because they have multiple cameras, you get the benefit of using your blind spot, a live video feed of your blind spot in here or many other features. So it's just worth pointing out that there's a lot of features in there. Or and skip aside to this technology in here. First thing I wanna point out is you see it says guest. It can say guest, it can say driver one or driver two. And you can customize those names to say your name or something else. I can make it say Peter. We can make it say someone else's name on here. Um, I do encourage you to set this up for yourself. You don't have to, but if you do, think of it like sharing a cell phone with someone you love. Just because you love them, doesn't mean you want the apps where they have the apps or you want the information where they have the information or in a car, for instance, doesn't mean that you want the car to beep every time you're coming near a, a line on the road or doesn't mean you want the car to steer for itself because this car is capable of steering for itself in certain situations. So some people will want those features, some people won't. And if you set this up for yourself and put your name on it, then you can just customize the car so that when you get in the car, not only are the radio stations in the order that you want or some of the other information in the order that you want, but you also have the ability 
to put all these apps that we want and the safety features the way you think they should be. So let's go into the setup here for a second. And we're going to go into the vehicle setup here. We're just going to change a few things around to have some fun with it. Uh, this is by no means a complete, I mean, a complete thing would be a two hour video and I don't want to bore you more than I'm already boring you, but this is kind of where we're looking at. So one of the things I like to do is let's just play with the cluster here for a second. You can select your themes over here and there's a lot of different themes. So right now it's linked to the drive mode. If I start switching the drive mode, which is over here, oops, I'm switching it too fast. I can go to comfort, I can go to eco. And you can see the differences there. Sport mode changes there and smart mode goes back to the sort of the standard feature here. If you don't want to link it to the drive mode, let's say you like one of those things you saw, you can make it A, B or C, but there's one more down there that's a D. And we're going to go down to the D mode, theme D. And now you see some pretty cool stuff. Uh, basically, it's going to show you a daytime scene. It's going to show you an evening theme. I've heard people say it does weather as well, and I have to drive this thing in different types of weather to sort of see that. But it's just kind of a cool-looking thing that kind of sets you at ease, gives you some peace. And, uh, you know, it's taking use of the digital screen or making use of the digital screen that you wouldn't uh, normally have. And I just think it's pretty cool. Uh, my Santa Cruz has the same thing, but my uh, fourth theme is a cube mode. And to be honest, I kind of like that sky mode that links to different times of day and gives you a sunset in the daylight so we're gonna put this back the way we had it just in case uh, somebody wants to take this car out the way it comes from the factory let's go through here and let's go to the illumination a lot of people have been asking about illumination and um there are no um there is no oh, what do you call it ambient lighting in this car so uh that's just to prove it there because some people have said i think the american cars do have it but they they've told me it has it and i've told them it doesn't and i just want to see where that's coming from all right let's go back here again for a second so we're going to go over to the driver assistance modes this is where i say if you choose some of these um if you choose some of these safety features not everybody's going to want the same thing so for driving convenience we've got kind of basic stuff highway drive assist auto speed change this is our advanced smart cruise control so the smart cruise control is capable of keeping the speed of the vehicle in front of you so you can set it for 120 kilometers an hour you can see there is a heads-up display there it's just hard to film but you can see that display there it flickers because of the way that it inter interacts with the camera uh, but yeah you can set that um you can set up this card to have highway drive assist. Highway drive assist is your smart cruise control and your lane keeping assist as long as well as your navigation that can do various things to basically allow the car to accelerate and brake based on traffic uh, patterns uh, around you. And it can also keep the car in the center of the lane by steering itself in the center lane. It also has things like over here, Highway auto speed change adjusts automatically the vehicle speed based on the highway. So when it says adjust automatically, it doesn't actually adjust automatically, but it gives you the ability to one tap the cruise control to go right to the speed limit if you want. On my personal car, I have it set up to go 10 over the speed limit because in Ontario, that's kind of how people drive on the highway. Uh, so it, it just shows me an arrow on the dash. Hey, the speed limit's 100. You want to go 110 on your cruise control and you can do the single tap up or down to bring you up to 110 or down to 110. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing. And then there's highway drive assist. And part of that highway drive assist is all part of this speed limit stuff so this speed limit uh offset speed limit assist is what we're talking about there so you can just have a speed limit warning and what the speed limit warning does is it puts the actual road sign into the dash here for the speed limit now it uses that from your navigation system but it also uses it from a camera up here the one that sees in front of you it helps you stay centered in the lane helps you do forward collision avoidance it's looking for road signs and when it sees those road signs um, it can say, you know, if it's 40 kilometers an hour, all of a sudden it will change in here to 40 kilometers an hour. And again, if you have it on cruise control, for instance, you can set it to go at 40 kilometers an hour. Or like we said, in my case, whoops, speed limit assist here. Uh, you can set it for five or 10 over, or you can go under the speed limit if you want that as well. So that's how I have mine set up. It's just a cool little feature that makes driving easier. Warning timing. So some of these things uh, for, for cer certain driving assistance, if you've ever been in a car where somebody's just turning off and their back end of the car is just still sitting in the road and the car starts beeping at you and you find that you're doing that too early, maybe the way you drive, you can go over there. And uh, somebody says 10 over, I have people flying past me at 140. Nobody drives 130, 120, you know, that never happens. Anyways, <laughs> uh, everybody in Ontario is laughing at me because they all know that we all drive a little faster than the speed limit here. So warning timing, if your car beeps a little too early, you can set it for lading, later. Uh, warning volume, you can set the beeping of some of these uh, beeping that warns you. You can set the volume of some of these things, including turning them off and just have other stuff. Haptic feedback, you can uh, turn that on and on. Driver attention warning. So if the leaving, if the vehicle is parked in front of you, um, if you're sitting there and you're not paying attention at a stoplight and the 
the car in front of you starts pulling away, you don't have to wait for the person behind you to honk at you. Your car will say beep beep and it'll just tell you that the vehicle in front of you has driven away and then you can continue to drive. So it's just kind of an extra little attention feature. If you don't want it to go off, you turn it off. And that's the nice thing with the tech review of this car. All of this safety stuff, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, you can sort of set the sensitivity of some of these things. And forward safety is a good example. So forward safety, set the proper uh, forward safety stuff. So this is the uh, forward collision avoidance system. So this car is capable of braking for itself to try to avoid a collision. It doesn't mean it's always gonna do it. There are certain conditions that have to be met. But if you have something on the active assist, active assist is the key word we're looking at, active. If it's active assist, it's capable of steering for itself or braking for itself. So in this case, it'll be braking. But let's say, let's say you don't want the car to ever brake for itself. Well, you can turn it on to the warning only, or you can turn the whole system off. Again, if you're sharing this car, you may have a preference there, and that's why you do that different um, system. Same idea exactly here. So this is the... Um, uh, lane safety, so automatically assist with steering to help prevent the vehicle from leaving the lane. So actively assisting the steering with the lane follow, lane keeping, which is right down here, it can actually come to the edge of the lane and nudge you back in. Now, if you want it more precise, where you don't have to wait till you come to the edge of the, line, the lane, you can tap this at any point when you're driving. If it sees lane markers or if it sees various things that it needs to see, it will keep you centered in the lane as well. All right, my outside light came on, so that means we're going to stop for a second here. All right, we're going to come back here and keep going through some of this tech stuff. I know this is kind of boring for some people, but you guys have given me some likes, and I appreciate that. Got about 78 people on. Those of you who haven't hit a like yet, do me a favor. Let's all hit it together. So we're going to go five, four, three, two, one. Hit the like right now. If you do that, we're going to have a whole bunch of people join us soon because when a whole bunch of people do that, everybody else gets notified. So it's kind of fun to do. All right, so let me just jump out again. Make sure I'm not uh, missing any of your questions. We're going to go back to some of that technology. If you want to see the seating space of this car, I did a video on the Sorentos just yesterday. You can see our YouTube homepage. Uh, yesterday, I showed you every seat, uh, front, middle, and back row to show you leg room and that kind of thing. So that will work well if you want to see some of that. We're going to stay a little bit away from that, but I will be talking about lighting in this car. So we're still having that come up, but I probably won't be jumping in, for instance, the third row of the seat on this car. Uh, U.S. cars have the ambient lighting, but they don't have heads-up display. So there you go. We have a heads-up display, and it's a very, very good heads-up display. It's got a, a lot of information in there. Can I compare the Nero and the Kona Electric next? I would love to. I'm not going to see a lot of Neros this year unless we sell one. Uh, they're very limited production for the next little while. Kona, I can get a Kona Electric in here for sure. Um, can I get burgundy interior with any exterior color? No. Uh, oh, you stumped me. I, did, I was going to memorize the colors you could get it with. I'm, I know it's white. I'm pretty sure it's black and a dark gray, um, but I'm not sure on that. So you'll have to just double check the website or I can get back to you on some of those things. The salesperson will know for you. That's just one thing I didn't memorize. I do apologize. The car braking for itself has been a lifesaver. Oh, that's, that's good. You don't really want your car braking for yourself, but I'm glad it's good. How do you compare the double clutch transmission with the Hyundai automatic transmission? I hear double clutch is not as smooth in shifting. Okay. While we're talking about that, that's a really good point. So this vehicle has a 2.5 liter turbo engine. It's got 281 horsepower. It's got 311 foot-pounds of torque. That is a lot. I don't know if you're used to numbers in cars, but this car is a rocket to drive. It's fast, it's fun, it's great. Part of the reason it's fast is because it has what's called a dual clutch, wet clutch transmission. If you're getting a dual clutch, the dual clutch wet clutch is kind of the creme de la creme. It's what Porsche uses as far as uh, the design of it, right? So that's a good thing. Um, nobody ever complains about a Porsche being rougher or jerkier to drive. Uh, so what it is, is think of it like a manual transmission. If you've ever driven with someone who's a manual transmission, as they release the clutch, there is a little bit of a nudge forward. So if you've driven a manual transmission, it's very difficult to drive a manual transmission at like one kilometer an hour, right? As you release that clutch, it's going to go two, three kilometers an hour. So when you back this car up or drive it forward, it has a different feel than a traditional automatic, and it likes to go two or three kilometers an hour. I'm guessing at the number, but the point is a little bit faster than absolute tiny, tiny crawl. So it has a little bit of a, not lurch forward, but a, a, a launch forward like you would be releasing a clutch because that's exactly what it's doing. It's releasing a clutch. I drive a dual clutch. I drive this exact same engine and transmission every day. I have a Hyundai Santa Cruz. Uh, it has the same engine transmission. It's a slightly different feel at very, very low speeds. It's not jerky, it's just different. Once you understand what it does, it's a little bit, it's fine. It's quite smooth on the highway. And the thing with a dual clutch wet clutch is it's a lightning fast shift without getting into a whole lot of details. Basically, if I'm in third gear, it already has fourth gear and second gear ready to go. So it drops a clutch and I'm instantly in that gear. It's a very, very quick shifting transmission. It's great for fuel efficiency and it's great for performance. And that's worth pointing out. So some people will say, oh, it feels 
lurchier, they're trying to describe it. It's just different, specifically in reverse and first gear. Beyond that, you're probably not gonna notice anything. Um, it's not a fault, it's just part of what makes it fun to drive. That's why Porsche uses a similar design. And it's also what makes it fairly efficient, which is, again, why high-end vehicles use it. Okay, so um, yeah, so somebody says the transmission is very smooth except when crawling in traffic, but it's not offensive. And yeah, crawling in traffic, it's different, but you just get used to it. Instead of when the first car departs and you leave right with it, you just give an extra two feet and then you launch, right? And that's sort of how you get used to it. It's, it takes half a day to get used to. Um, I kind of like it. Lane keeping assist icon is different than my 19 Kona. When did it change? Uh, probably around now. I don't know. Um, the lane keep and lane follow assist are different things too. So let me just see if there's anything else I miss. Uh, will it have an all black interior on SX PHEV models? Yes. So I don't have a PHEV model, but really quickly while we're here, PHEV is plug-in hybrid. If you get a PHEV SX, watch my other video that compares the gasoline to the PHEV comparison because it's a completely different looking car. This one has some black, piano black trim along here, along there, and along there. The other car has a uh, sort of patterned black or a, a textured black finish along here. The wheels are also different. There's a number of differences between the SX gasoline and the SX PHEV as far as looks go. Uh, so you should just be aware of them, including the size of the wheels is different. Uh, so be aware of those. I did a good video on it that compares those differences and uh, just keep in mind that there are some differences, but yes, it has a black interior in those cars as well. On camera, camera amplifies the brown in the burgundy. Yes, that's a good point. It just looks more brown, orangey on camera than burgundy in here. All right, let's keep going back in here. We're gonna jump into the technology again. Um, actually, before we go technology, I wanna talk headlighting because the SX has different LED headlights than the regular Sorento. All of them come with LED headlights, but there is a difference and I wanna show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so you know what we're talking about with uh, headlights. So headlights, fog lights, and uh, we'll turn a single signal on. All right, signal light, there is one in the mirror there, it's kind of nice. And over here, so when the car is just driving down the road, this is your daytime running light. It is white, sometimes it'll flicker on camera, it doesn't flicker in real life, it's just the way it reacts to the camera. But every one of these, and then again, the signal light turns here. Now, if you have a lower trim line, you'll still have LED lights, but the signal light won't be here, it'll be an incandescent light up there. These are the higher end of the two LED headlights. And I hopefully you can see the difference because if you're shopping for the car, you may wanna look for this. It's a little hard to film here, but I'll show you on the unlit car in a second as well. These uh, projector beam style LEDs are the top possible version of LED lights in the Kia Hyundai lineup. They have a more precise cutoff, which you can see. Whoops, come on camera. Oh, camera, come on back. Oh, camera's not listening to me. There we go has a more precise cutoff, which you can see right here. Usually when I show you a cutoff on the LED lights, this is, you know, the thickness of a finger this way out. Usually it's about this much, sort of from a fade to a sharp cutoff. So it's a really precise cutoff. And I find that these are a little bit wider and well lit to the width of the, uh, the vehicle. So they're excellent. And of course you have that bright white color and the nice uh, sharp cutoff. This one also has LED fog lights. So again, just showing you here, if you don't see this projector style one, two, three, you're dealing with just a little bit lower trim. They are perfectly good headlights. They are very good LED headlights, but these are better and you will notice a little bit of a difference at night. That's the top end headlight you can have and this Kia Sorento SX has that. So as a tech thing, it's something worth pointing out. While we're here, we'll take a look at the back here. Not every Sorento has LED lights. These ones, of course, they're instant on, instant off. I don't know if that shows as much on camera, but you can see um, they are LED, whereas the lower trim lines are not LED. The LEDs seem to me to fill out this a little bit better, whereas the other ones have a bright spot in the middle and kind of flares a little bit there. So the LED lights are worth it. We're gonna talk LED lights inside as well. Let me just show you them as we jump in. If we look over here, the kind of cool technology thing with these LED lights is you can turn them all on like that, or you can just touch the glass or the rim here and they turn on individually, which is a pretty cool thing. Uh, mirrors have been updated. So you have your garage door openers right here. When we're talking about blind spot safety, let's just finish up oh, right here for a second here. Oops, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, wanna show you something again, the active assist. So blind spot safety is a pretty cool one here. You've got the blind spot, blind view camera. So if you don't wanna show the camera, in the um, dash here, you can turn that off. I don't know why you would, but you could. Safe exit assist is another cool technology. So safe exit assist, we have safe exit warning. And what it does is it uses the same radar that looks in your blind spot. But in this car, 
it can beep and warn you when, when you're parked in the car and someone's coming up behind you on a bicycle or on a car or something like that. Safe exit warning will send out a beeping thing like beep, beep, somebody's coming. Safe exit assist is what you really want if you can because the rear inside door handle on that side, so the child lock essentially, activates, which means the inside door handle deactivates for a second while that car is whipping by. If you've got kids that are prone to jumping out into traffic maybe, um, that's a cool thing. And you can arm that or disarm that with this system. It's a smart system. And then the active assist, again, active assist steers or brakes the car. So imagine for a second with your blind spot detection, if you signal right now, you're gonna have this little orange, or actually it's a red triangle on this car. I don't know if you can see it. See that little triangle right there? Oh boy, that's hard to show you. Come on camera. Yeah, that little triangle right there, that's gray one. It'll light up red when a car's in your blind spot. So as soon as you signal on this particular car, that light's gonna light up. You're gonna see that same symbol in your heads up display, because you can set it up to show in there. And you know it's gonna say that there's a car here. So of course, when you signal and that lights up and you get the beeping, you're not gonna turn into the traffic. Anytime a car's in your blind spot, that red light comes on, but it'll only beep at you when you signal with that red light on. Now, what happens if I'm over here and you wanna to come to this lane? Well, obviously when you signal, it's not gonna beep at you, it's not gonna get angry at you at all. It's gonna let you come over. But what happens is I'm also gonna come into that lane at the same time you're trying to come into that lane. Well, what the car is capable of doing with the active assist is it breaks the front side right wheel. That just nudges you back away and that acts very quickly to nudge you away from the car that's not paying attention to coming into you and obviously you don't see them as well. So. Active assist is what this car is all about. It's even got things like junction, collision, avoidance assist. So there's a various ways it can see things in front of you, both a camera up there and a radar plate down here, and it can see things in front of you. So you're stopped at a red light and you're gonna turn, or you're stopped at a yellow light and you're gonna turn in when the intersection clears. I am paying no attention and I'm gonna run that red light or yellow light. So you're looking this way because that's where you wanna turn. You think I'm gonna stop, but then I don't. So this car is capable of seeing that. And as I'm running that light, it's gonna turn and it's capable of stopping itself, even if you're looking that way because it sees me going through. So there's so many active assist features that you can set up on this car and leave on and don't interfere. And that's the big thing is most of these systems never interfere until you know the last possible second, but they can save you from having a collision. So there's the basic tech overview. We didn't talk about the luxury features, the panoramic sunroof, the heated ventilated seats in the front, the ventilated seat, or sorry, heated seats in the rear. Um, there's so many things in this car we could talk about for that kind of thing, but here's the thing. We are not a regular review channel. We come back to these cars over and over and over again. So if you wanna see the luxury features on this car, we'll do another video, we'll do that again. So if you're interested in this car, do me a favor, hit the like button here, um, hit the subscribe button, because we'll come back to those kinds of things. So we'll try to leave it there. I'm gonna take some questions in a second. Tomorrow, I've had a lot of questions about the Ionic 5, and I've already done a bunch of videos on the Ionic 5. I don't know if you guys want me to do it again as early as tomorrow, uh, but you guys can let me know. Maybe I'll throw it up on Instagram. This is my Instagram account, and maybe I'll put a question up there tonight, a poll to see if you guys wanna see that again tomorrow. I do have access to that car again tomorrow, uh, so we can throw it in the live video if you want, and uh, you guys can tell me if you wanna do that. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna double check the questions here. You can feel free to let me know if you wanna know more about the Ionic 5, and we'll try to get some of that information there. So I'm just going down to the bottom of my questions here. Uh, does the States Kia 2022 Sorento SX have the classics or the LED one? Um, if you're talking about lights, I'm not sure. Somebody keeps saying they want my jacket. Um, maybe we need to start a little merch thing. Somebody said we need to start a merch thing. I got this from our head office, I think. I think that's where we ordered it from, from so I'm not sure if we can get more or not. Uh, the horsepower and pound feet of torque is identical to Santa Fe Turbo, but the Santa Fe has GDI. No, so that's not true. Okay, so the Santa Fe, basically Hyundai and Kia share this engine. And this commenter is saying that that's a GDI engine there and this is not a GDI engine. These engines are the best combination of both. So gasoline direct injection is GDI. What GDI does is at high throttle, high demand, high load, it's just a better system that can provide more power. It puts the fuel directly into uh, where you want it to go. So this car and every version of this engine, so when you have the 2.5 liter turbo with the dual clutch, wet clutch transmission, whether it's Kia or Hyundai, you actually have multi-port injection at lower speeds, which is what you want to have the best of both worlds because a multi-port washes over the valves, washes the fuel over the valves and cleans the carbon buildup out of them at lower speeds. And at low speeds, a GDI engine can have some carbon buildup, which is why you do things like an induction service at your dealer. 
This one has the multi-port injection at low speed, so it's multi-port low speeds, and it's a mix between, um, there's an in-between stage where it's a mix between uh, multi-port and gasoline direct injection, and then ga full gasoline direct injection at higher speeds. So regardless of uh, which company you buy from, it's the same engine, same transmission, and I think that's the best combination of both, because at that high speed, there's nothing wrong with the gasoline direct injection. It's not going to build up carbons at the high speeds, but the lower speeds, it can build up some carbons you won't have that anymore because it goes to a multi-port engine so hopefully that makes sense um and that is i promise you correct information so the commenter uh i think was just misinformed on that so i just want to make sure that we're putting out good information uh can you address the theme d in the sorrento cluster setting where does it get its weather info and is it current forecasted so i wasn't sure until the other day when somebody commented on me that that theme d which shows the sunset and sunrise kind of theme I wasn't sure that it showed weather. I wasn't aware of that because I haven't actually driven these cars in various weather enough to, in that theme, to pay attention. So if it draws weather in this car, let me show you where it would likely come from. It would be GPS data for location, uh, but then there is a weather system in here, uh, weather information, which if I can come back to it here, um, let me just see if I can, let's go to something. Let's just go to the map here. And we'll pull in there we go so there we go so there's some weather information right oh it's not up there we go weather information is right there so this weather information is hd radio data weather um if it's not pulling that information it may not be accurate but let me just show you the hd radio data because it's not showing it's not going to be a good example uh doppler radar or weather data oh it does show this so some of this is showing in here and the cloud cover and that kind of thing is coming from here it may not always be local to you and it may not always be working or up to date but it should my guess is that if it's pulling weather data to show in here which i again i wasn't sure that it did it, that's the only place that I can think of where it would pull that data from is in the car. And it doesn't always work on every car in every situation. This car hasn't even been PDI'd. It's been sitting outside. I just turned the shipping mode off, so it wouldn't have been activated. This uh, building here, the way it's sheltered, shielded, doesn't always pick up that radio signal. Um, so again, it's not always fully local. Uh, I don't know as much as I should know about that, to be very blunt. Because again, like I said, I wasn't aware that it picked up weather in that system. I thought it was just sunset, sunrise, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you guys were telling me it's weather and that's that's entirely possible. Uh, I just, that's the only way I could think it could pull weather data. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit. All right, we are 36, almost 37 minutes in. Uh, is there anything else I missed? Um, okay, I don't think, uh, can EV cars be towed? Uh, are the motors free from the drivetrain or do, uh, can you put them on tow? Bed? Basically an EV should, should not be uh, flat towed. Um, now I do know people who tow a uh, Nero EV, on a dolly behind a motorhome uh, where the front wheels are off the ground. Kia does not recommend that. I can't recommend that, but I know they've done it for several thousand kilometers without any issues. Um, so that's possible potentially, but I can't tell you that for sure it is. Uh, some of our EVs, the previous generation to the 20, I have a 2020 Kia Soul, so it's 2019 Kia Soul EV and previous. When you put them in park, the rear parking brake goes on. So that would not work for that reason alone. Um, but I can't say, I have to say you can't, flat toe EVs, uh, I would put them up off the ground or any drive wheels up off the ground until somebody smarter than me tells me differently. Any idea when you might have the Tucson PHEV to review? I don't have that car coming in anytime immediately. Um, I'll have to double check with our, with our people there to see how soon we can get it, but I don't have it coming in. It won't be here this month or probably even next, but maybe I can get one through head office or we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll make some calls this year. Many four-wheel drive, all-wheel drives don't allow towing. Yes, that's right. But EVs would, of course, be different than... They would have different reasons for not allowing towing than our gasoline vehicles here. All right. Uh, if you're in the States, we have drive modes and terrain modes here in Canada. You don't have that in the States. Terrain modes include mud and snow mode, whereas you guys have just have a locker button. So there are some technology differences there. Again, we've run out of time, 38 minutes. If you want to know more technology, more whatever about this car let me know in the comments the types of videos you want to see and i'll make sure i do that again and if you're a fan of this vehicle make sure you jump in and subscribe and we'll have those for you again so i'm going to thank everybody for watching it's been fun tomorrow like i said we have the opportunity to pull the ionic 5 back in here i'm not sure what video we should do but i might just be a your questions answered video and we'll go from there so uh, we'll put some stuff up on instagram and uh, like I said, follow me on Instagram. And if you have questions about that car, probably I'll put a poll up and you can tell me what kind of things you want to know about that car. And uh, if I know them, I haven't spent as much time as I want to with that car, but if I know them, I'll answer them and I'll do my best to look up the answers if I don't have them for the two o'clock to just try to get more information for you there. Thanks everybody for joining us. It's been fun. We'll see you again tomorrow.